Hi, welcome to all about mechanical engineering. In the previous videos, we have discussed the first law of thermodynamics in detail. Then we have seen its application to open system as well as closed systems. Now before proceeding to the second law of thermodynamics, the most important part which is to be understood is why the second law of thermodynamics was framed. So there are certain limitations to the first law of thermodynamics. In order to remove those limitations, the second law of thermodynamics was framed. So in order to understand the limitations, we have to just take a quick revision about the first law of thermodynamics. So we have two statements for first law of thermodynamics, one for the process and one for the cycle. So what is the statement for a process? It says that the amount of heat supplied during the process to a system is equal to the summation of change in internal energy of the system plus the work done by the system. So it says that Q is equal to delta E plus W for the process. Now for a cycle we know the change in internal energy is zero as it is a state function. The system returns back to its original state that's why delta is zero. So for the cyclic process there is a different statement for first law. First law tells that the amount of heat supplied over the complete cycle is proportional to the amount of work done over the complete cycle. If you remove this proportionality sign, we put it here equal and we put one. One is nothing but joule, which is the unit of heat. This was all about the first law statement. Now, looking at these two, equations we have three limitations in this statements so what are the three limitations the first thing is it does not give us the condition it does not specify the condition under which the heat can be transferred into work so the first law of state, first law of thermodynamics does not give us an idea under which conditions the heat can be transferred into work. The second thing is direction. Now, first law of thermodynamics says that heat can be converted into work, but it does not specify in which direction the heat can be converted into work. So this is also another limitation. Now the third thing. Proportion. Now it says the amount of heat can be converted into work. The amount of heat supplied should be equal to the amount of work or the complete cycle. Here also it says the amount of heat supplied will be equal to summation of internal energy plus work done. But it does not specify what proportion of heat supplied is convertible into work. So there are three limitations. The first is conditions. It does not specify under which conditions the heat can be converted into work. Second, it does not specify the direction in which the heat can be converted into work. The third is it does not specify the proportion of what the heat can be converted into work. So these are the three limitations of first law of thermodynamics and that's why the second law of thermodynamics was framed. And there are two statements of second law of thermodynamics which we will see in the coming videos and using those two statements these three limitations have been eliminated. So this was all about the limitation of first law of thermodynamics. Hope you have enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe our channel and stay connected with us. Thank you for watching this video.